Hey, Hokan. Alyssa here from Swedish Therapy. Uh, you don't know me, but I did write to you. And in writing you, you did a great thing and you sent me your book. So uh, in the last few years, I've been going through this book with a lot of interest, to say the least. And you were nice enough to give me a little personalized note. Best uh, regards, Hokan. Uh, you also sent me uh, this information, pleasant deep pressure, expanding the social touch hypothesis. And uh, Laura Case and I have had emails back and forth. And I believe that we're on the same page when we uh, come to the conclusions that, sorry, what we feel can change how we feel. And I have to say that I am enamored with your book. And I'm wondering if it's time to do some co collaboration with some of the people that I have met from the United States. So at one time, the United States was working uh, with researchers here in Sweden, Anders Blomqvist, and obviously you have also met A.D. Bug Craig. Craig. Um, there's a lot of work in here. And as a manual therapist for 20 years, I've seen how touch can affect somebody's state of mind, but also their physical body. Now, I'd like to uh, introduce you to uh, some people that I met yesterday and I will share my screen with you so you can meet them too. And this is Rachel Clausen and this is Nicole Trombley and they have uh, anatomy classes and they're deep into the science of what is going on underneath the skin. I also met Paul Mettler in May with the International Consortium of Manual Therapy, and he's been working diligently in Illinois and now Chicago, working with changing the tissue on the outside, um, the dermis, in order to affect the body as a whole. And he has some incredible research regarding everything that he has collected over the past probably 30 years. So when we're talking about skin, there's no reason for me to believe that I'm gonna be saying something that you don't know. But this did come from Rachel and it did come from Nicole yesterday. And the sub subcutaneous tissue are, are things that I'm working with on a daily basis as a, a body worker and the epidermis and the dermis and this retinacular cutis, Dr. Carla Stecco has written about this extensively on um, our wrists and our ankles, foot lead, and how the proprio receptors of this uh, retinacular cutis are so rich in information and sending it directly to our brain to find out where we're at in space with our proprioception, reception, with uh, knowing exactly how we are standing on the ground. And, and I think it's time maybe for there to be some collaboration because I know you work diligently over the years with this. So, the superficial fascia, I cannot say much about. That's something for uh, Rochelle. And as you will find out here, Rochelle was instrumental and a volunteer in the Plastination Project. And the Plastination Project was uh, done in Gubin, Germany with researchers from all over the world for putting the first human form named Freya together in the superficial deep fascia layers. So as Rachel uh, Rochelle says here, the skin down to the deep fascia, and we're realizing that there's an architectural continuity. Maybe this is something that you have already realized. And the reason that I'm here is just to say, 
I, I have tried very hard to understand what I'm doing with the human body every time that I touch the human body. And there's so much information. There's so much information that is available, but not too many regular people know this. And it's the regular people that need to know this so that they know how to work with their body so their bodies can feel better. Um, this information right here, obviously it won't be anything new to you, but this particular schematic regarding uh, mechanoreceptors and proprioceptors and how they feed up into the brainstem and how they feed up into the insula, this is all information that people need to know. And uh, Rochelle Clausen yesterday, when she was talking about the architectural structure of the dermis, she was talking about these, these uh, skin ligaments. Now, uh, like Paul Mettler, who was on the call, discussed how the, the skin from an orange comes down and forms little fascicles. I think these particular ligaments really need some looking at. And I don't know what your uh, uh, office is doing. I don't know what your lab is doing but I wanted to introduce you to Rochelle and, and uh, Nicole and Paul Mettler, and they will definitely, without a doubt, be at this particular location in September, 2022. This is the sixth Fascial Research Congress. And, oops, I have the wrong one up. Oh, I'm so sorry. I have the wrong one up. Let's try this again. Oh, this is the sixth Fascial Research Congress. And right here is Dr. Langevin. So the US Department of Health and Human Services has different branches and the National Institutes of Health has another branch for the National Complementary Center for Complementary Integrative Health. And here, as Dr. Langevin has talked about, they are disseminating information and research on fascia in her laboratory on the role of connective tissue at the interface between musculoskeletal systems and the immune system. So they're very much interested in how the, its role and in, in how mechanical forces when it's put onto the tissue, like Paul Mettler is doing with his uh, dermal um, fascia release. I think I have that one. Yes, I had to get it correct. Paul Mettler in Chicago, dermal fascial restoration. So uh, just so that you know that I'm not making this up, uh, here he is with some information about the last 40 years He's been working to do this type of therapy with people in his clinic. He's a physical therapist, a hook gymnast. And, and it's all about how the upper levels of the skin and the small changes that can happen in the, those with the collagen can slide and glide. And Rochelle talks about how our collagen and our fascia, there's certain places that are anchored there are certain places that have slide and glide. And where it needs slide and glide is where there's a lot of pH changes happening. Um, and there's a lot of information coming from the body on the, from the exteroception to the interoception. And if the slide and glide is not happening, then the body has a hard time fatha betere basleep. It cannot make a good decision. And the body's only choice when it comes to making decisions is trying the best that it can with what it has. And here, as we have the cutaneous sensory uh, system, uh, your colleague there in England who's working more with uh, infants now, all the somatory sensory uh, processing and the peripheral nervous system into the central nervous system is so incredibly important for our sense of self and our preservation. 
as it says, as a species. I know you and I are speaking the same language, even though um, my Swedish is not very good, but this, this mechanical force stimulation, omvenlas, to electrical, to chemical. And I hope this is a video letter that you'll take with you and seriously consider maybe contacting some of those individuals if it so uh, um, behooves you, or maybe attending uh, an uh, anatomy scapes anatomy class with Rochelle in 2023, um, Michelle, Rochelle and Nicole, and hopefully Paul Mettler will be there. If not, maybe you'll see them at the Fascial Research Congress. I hope the best for your research. I just hope it translates soon for the average person. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Well, there's one more picture. I do a lot of reading, but I think this haptic perception enables people to explore their environment like it says here. And what I'm trying to do is to help people that have come here that aren't speaking Swedish, that don't speak hardly any English and lower their sympathetic nervous system and using the primary somatosensory cortex and the secondary somatosensory cortex. And I'd love to have some validation from somebody in research and in science saying, yeah, this really is working. And we're using it on the skin because what we feel is important to how we feel. All right, I'm done. Thanks. Bye, Holka.